Hi guys! As most of you know, I have a metaphobia and I've been getting a ton of requests to do more videos about it. This video is sort of a mishmash of stuff that I've been requested to talk about. If you don't have a metaphobia and you don't know what it is, I'll try to explain it for you right now. What it basically is, is an extreme fear of all things related to throwing up. I don't want to explain it too much because it could get a little triggering, so if you really want to know, look it up or watch some of my other videos. I think I explained it better in one of my other videos, but I'm not quite sure. The first thing I'm going to talk about is something that JT asked me to talk about. He has a channel of his own. Go check it out. The link is below. He asked me to describe the stages of my panic attack and what they feel like. My panic attacks have changed over the years, so they're not quite as bad as they used to be, but they're still no fun to deal with. Typically, it starts with me starting to feel a little angry. Anxious. I'll be like, oh no, it's about to happen. Like I'm about to have a panic attack and you just feel a little like, okay. I call it being on edge. Then after that, I feel it in my throat. It's a very odd feeling. It feels like your throat is just closing up. Like if it's this big right now, it's getting like this and it's just getting so small and like it's hard to swallow. It's hard to breathe. And that's when I know that the panic attack is starting. Then everything just becomes very loud and all of my senses are heightened. And if I'm in a public place, I can't even comprehend what's happening. It's all in like slow motion and everything just sounds loud and I feel like everybody's smothering me. My heart will beat super fast. I'll get hot, but then I'm cold. The main thing that freaks me out though is my throat. My throat just gets so weird during a panic attack. I, can, I can't even describe it and it doesn't help with emetophobia because then I think I'm gonna get sick and I get nauseous and it's just, oh, it's just a cycle. Because panic attacks can give you symptoms of feeling ill, which is what emetophobia is like. It just it's a vicious cycle because emetophobia can trigger a panic attack, then a panic attack can trigger emetophobia, and then it just keeps going in a circle until you just can't cope. A lot of people have asked me to talk about how I deal with emetophobia and how I go to public places with it and stuff like that. So I'm here to talk about some tips that I have. Above all, it is so important to stay hydrated, fed, and rested. If you are low on sleep, your anxiety is going to be so much worse to deal with, especially if you're hungry or if you're thirsty. Just make sure that you have all of those things. Sips of water throughout the day are so important. Eating three meals a day with snacks, also important. And getting enough sleep, that is so important. Those are three things that you should definitely make sure you are doing. Something that really helps me is if I give myself time before I sleep to just wind down, come down from the day, and feel relaxed. Whether it's reading a book, watching some TV, just curling up in bed, taking a shower, it can be anything. Just something that makes you feel relaxed and gets you to wind down and get ready to go to sleep. I know I always sleep better if I have that little time. Okay, public places. I always make sure that I carry sanitizer and mint gum. Those are two essential things for when I go out in public. Mint gum is so helpful when I feel like I'm panicking. It opens up my throat and it helps with any nausea I might be feeling. And sanitizer, it's pretty self-explanatory why that's important. But here's another thing. To this day, I am terrified of using public restrooms. Terrified? I hate that. I try to avoid it, but you can't always avoid it. Sometimes you're out, sometimes you're in another city, in another state, and you have to use them. So if you have sanitizer, the good thing is that you can wash your hands in the bathroom, leave the bathroom, and then sanitize, just to be sure. That might seem excessive to some people, but it really, really helps me calm down because I'm always afraid that I'll catch something in a public bathroom and I'll get sick because to me it just like sounds like tons of germs and it just really freaks me out. So if I have sanitizer, I feel a little bit better. Something else for going to public places, it's always helpful to have a good support system like your best friend. If I have my best friend with me, I am so much more calm and if I'm with my parents so it's important to have that sort of support system so that if you do get nervous you have people there that will understand and will try to help you. Restaurants. This is something I get asked about a lot. For me it's important to find some restaurants locally that you feel comfortable at no matter what. There are a few places that I am okay going with and they're comfortable and my family likes them and we tend to go to those places. Another thing to remember is that if you go to a restaurant they have to keep things clean. There are rules for it. It's okay to tell your parents or your grandparents that a restaurant makes you uncomfortable. They will most likely want to find a place that you are comfortable at and that 
they would like to go. You're allowed to take care of yourself and address your needs. Don't worry about inconveniencing people or annoying people. It's, it's okay to take care of yourself and to speak up for yourself and to make sure your needs are met. Speaking of that, it is so important to talk about emetophobia because we need to make sure that people understand there are some real jerks out there on the internet that will try to hurt you. I actually dealt with somebody sending me very triggering pictures on Twitter and that is just unbelievable, uncalled for, and disgusting. And if we talk about emetophobia and get people to understand, then that will happen less and less. You just have to keep trying. The more you go out, the more you go to public places, the more you face fears, the more your confidence will grow and the more you'll be able to do even more of that stuff. And I believe in you. You can live with this phobia. You can live a full life with this phobia. You can live a fulfilling life with this phobia. It's all possible. And you can do it. I know you can. If you have more questions for me, send them to me on Twitter or in the comments or on YouTube messaging. I want to help. I hope this video helps you feel less alone. I love you all. Stay beautiful, you people. Bye!